All right, so today we're going to talk about rotational kinetic energy. So we're going to look at what happens when we kind of put a lot of the stuff we've been learning about moment inertia and rotational dynamics into play here. All right, so let's say we've got a wheel. All right, here's a wheel. And here's the center of mass of the wheel. It's a nice uniform wheel. And that center of mass is moving with such velocity. And I, you know, if it was last year in regular physics or honors physics, I would say, okay, hey, what is, how much energy does it have? And you'd be like, well, you know, you move your zero line to the center of mass, blah, blah, blah. And you're going to say, okay, well, it's just moving. So it only has EK. And so that is one half MV squared. And, you know, last year it'd be like, yeah, awesome. You know, here's your cookie. Well, now we have another element that we just totally ignored. That's why physics sucks. The more you do it, the more you learn. And you realize, wait, were you relying to me the whole time? Yeah, kind of. Now we know that it's also rotating. So it also has a rotational velocity. All right, so it has linear velocity and rotational, or angular velocity, I should say. So now we have to ask ourselves, okay, so what's the link between those two? Okay, because in theory, you can have an object that's not moving by its center of mass, it's just spinning. I think we'd all agree it has energy, because you could get that spinning wheel to, say, do something. I mean, think of a wheel on, you know, water wheels. You've got, like, the water rushing down. It just makes it spin, and you could then connect it to do work. So therefore, it must have energy just by spinning. Okay. So how do we get to that point? Well, first we have to remember the link between rotational and angular velocity. So linear velocity is V, and that's equal to R omega. Okay, so if we look at this, this kinetic energy is technically, we've always kind of been lying about this because we always just choose one center of mass. But if we were to really extrapolate this, that's actually equal to the sum of all these parts because you could have multiple things moving you could analyze every single part so it's actually the sum of one half mv squared and then what we're going to do is we're just going to do a little algebra we're going to pull out that one half sum of mv squared okay so that's that's really what your kinetic energy is because you could have an object could say well it's not just one part it's multiple parts it could have a bunch of balls rolling around in it so your center of mass is kind of goofy blah 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 so what we're going to do is we're going to add these two together all right we're just going to do some quick substitution here so if i now look at this rotational let's do this we'll go over here then we have all right so this is our rotational energy then that is equal to one half times the sum of m, but that's v squared. So we got to take this chunk here, and so it's r squared omega squared. Okay, looks pretty ugly. Don't worry, we'll get through this. But then here's a fun thing: this chunk right here, this sigma m r squared. Well. It pops up a lot. And so what ended up happening was physicists said, you know, let's let's give this a name. And they called this the moment of inertia. And all that really means is how easy or hard it is to rotate something. All right, so if it has a very high value, then it's very hard to make it spin or rotate. If it has a very low value, it's very easy to make it spin or rotate. All right, so they said, okay, we're going to call that the moment of inertia, and we will then give it the letter capital I. Well, when you do that, then you get a new equation. So let's go back here. So now your rotational is equal to one half i omega squared and that's the equation for rotational energy so if i was to look at this wheel that is both moving horizontally and rotating then the total energy would equal 
both your kinetic plus your rotational. So the total energy would actually be one half mv squared plus one half i omega squared. So we're not changing our understanding. Everything we did before with energy is still good, okay? Nothing's broken. We just were ignoring pieces, and now we're bringing those pieces back into play, all right? And it's the rotational energy that we're bringing back into play, okay? Now, there's one other thing I have to mention at this point is that we're going to work with different types of objects, and each object has its own moment of inertia. Now, I have another video which walks through how you can derive the moment of inertia for every single object, but there are a few that you honestly need to friggin' memorize, okay? They pop up a lot, and it's just gonna make your life easier if you memorize them. So here's the, the list that I say. There's technically one more, but I've never seen it on a test ever. So um, I wouldn't worry about it, but there's technically one more. So let, I'm gonna do some horrible drawings here. So let's say we have a solid cylinder. All right, you got a solid cylinder and it's rotating through its, its center of axis, all right? So then this is gonna be I equals one half M R squared, or that's your R value right there. And then obviously M is the mass of the cylinder. Then you have a hoop, you know? So you got yourself a hoop here and it's rotating around the, the center as well. Okay, so we have a hoop. And it's rotating around the center. Uh, that is I equals one half. There's no one half in this one. Oh my gosh. Has, has it been a day for you guys too? It's been, no! Oh my gosh, what just happened? The whole world just exploded on me. I refuse to start this over. Ugh, life. This is why I like to do this in one shot, because you get to see that life is not clean. You're like, my teacher knows everything, gets it right in the first try. Lies and deception. All right, so let's try that again here. All right, so this is just mr squared. All right, uh, there's another one for hoop. You'll see why I put the one half in there later. So the other one that comes up a lot is a sphere. All right, so you've got your solid sphere here, and it's just rotating through its center. Solid sphere. And that is equal to two fifths mr squared. Again, r is always the radius of these objects. I think you guys see that. Then you've got my favorite, the rod. This one comes up a lot. Now, the rod at the center is one thing, and we'll see that the rod has other points. So we've got ourselves a rod. All right, and it's just rotating around the center like so. Okay, this is rotating like that. All right, so if it spins around the center, kind of like you were to twirl a baton in your hand, then your I value is equal to 1 12th MR. Don't do the R, Szymanski. Do better. See, now R, I don't know. You don't use an R here because it's an L because it's how long is it? So where? This is L, so one half m l squared. All right. Now, often with the rod, instead of just spinning at the center, I mean, like think of like a baseball bat. You're kind of swinging at the end, not the extreme end with baseball bat, but you, you get the gist. And if you were to look at that, and we do a rod at one end, so we've got the same rod. So now we're doing it all the way at the end, where again, this is L, that's your length. Then your I value is now one third ML squared. So it's totally different. And like I said, baseball bat's an excellent example. Take a baseball bat, hold it in the middle, and just rotate your hand left and right. It's pretty easy to do. But if you grab it by one of the extreme ends and you try and do that, then you're like, oh my gosh, this is you know really torquing on my wrists. So you can see how that I value for the center is way lower than it is for the end because it's just easier to rotate something around center. Uh, the solid sphere has a friend known as a thin shell. Think of like an egg. So you know, it's hollow. It's basically a solid sphere, but it's hollow. 
So same thing, but now it's hollow. That has an I value of two thirds MR squared. And the last one that I tell you to memorize is a hoop again, but this time the hoop is rotating this way. It's like, like spinning a coin, I guess, would be the best example. All right. So if you were to do it that way, then your hoop, but now it's spinning, like I said, it's like a coin on a table. Then that I value is the one half m r squared, and that's why the one half was jumping in my head. There is one for a solid cylinder spinning sideways, but it's really ugly. And like I said, I've never seen it on a test, so I don't think you have to memorize it. Uh, I wouldn't waste the time doing it. So yeah, but I would highly recommend memorizing these uh, seven different ones because they all pop up and, and instead of having to sit there and derive it, you can go, yep, I know that, done and done. Uh, especially these rods, they are super common. All right, hope that helps with your understanding of, you know, rotational energy and moment of inertia and all that fun stuff. I guess I'll be seeing you guys in class.